Hey, what's going on guys? Mark back in the shrimp room today on Mark's Aquatics. It's a lovely day out here today in Wales. As you can see there, I'll just take you in. Look at all those little baby cherries that have hatched. And that is just a little small portion of them. If you look around the tank, you can see them absolutely everywhere. We had a good little haul with those guys. Look at them all up in amongst that lot there. All over the sponge filters on that side. Some of them on the old cucumber there, having a little munch on that. And loads more on this side as well. Hiding in amongst the plants, all over the plants. We've done very well. We've had a huge hatch rate on there, which is really, really good. Now then, on to... Hey, who's that? That's my mate Lemon. Where are you, buddy? Come and say hello. Hello. Here he is. Oh, no, there he goes. He went as fast as he can. He wants to go out. He's learning to go through the cat flap at the moment. We've put one in. And he's, him and George, or well, George is used to one, but he, um, he's trying to, he's learning. He's doing our heads in, trying to get in and out, but he'll get there in the end. We've got the plecos there. We've got the lovely blue-eyed lemon short fin plecos, the L144s. The male on the right, female on the left. If we can get in and have a quick close look at that. Yeah, so I thought what we'd do today, guys, on this video is shoot up into my local woods and we'll have a look at a few freebies that we can get in the UK. If you're if you're in the UK, a lot of these plants are distributed along quite a way around the world. So we'll have a look at what we can find in the woods, different things for different hides and various things like that you can get free from nature. And we'll have a look at those and see what we can find. If you're wondering what that is, I'm not telling you. No, I will. I'll tell you. That's what I use. That stuff there, you see? The aqua care. Care, sorry. Someone sent me this. And they stick to the glass as well, which is quite handy. So that's what they're eating. I've just thrown one of them in there for the plecos, because they like a bit of varied diet. So they're mostly um, little herbivores, but they will take various things. They'll mostly eat whatever you throw in there, and it gives them a good balanced diet. Right then, guys, we get the walking boots on, I think. And we'll head up into the woods and see what we can find. Ah, there you go, guys. We're down in the woods. Look at all these nettles, all freshly sprouting up from the spring. And as we all know in the shrimp world, fantastic for keeping your shrimp healthy. Blanch them down, boil them up, and then uh, sink the leaves into the tank and they'll happily pull away at those. High in all the calcium, magnesium, stuff like that, which is great for their molting, shedding, and all those kind of things. You've got blackthorn here as well with the old berries, you don't feed them the berries but these new leaves that are coming out you can use those as well you can blanch them up and put them in, they're a little bit more um, a bit of a harder leaf than the nettle, they take a little bit more boiling but you can use those guys and all these fresh oak leaves as well we've got coming out as well, now this is the time of year when I pick them, If you, I'm not sure if you remember my old video where I was um, dehydrating these leaves it was quite a while back, if I remember, I'll put it in the links down below. But with these oak leaves, when they're nice and new like that, they're packed with all the nutrients because of the fresh growth. They're pumping up all that water, all the minerals to produce these new leaves. And before anything gets hold of them and starts tearing into them, you can get some beautiful big leaves. Just peel them off like that. And you can take them home and you can put them in between two or three sheets of, um, of, news, of sorry, newspaper or kitchen towel I use and then put it the microwave put it in the microwave for about a minute and put a weight on top of it to press it flat and the water will then will be extruded out with the heat sucked into the tissue and then you can pack them away in some tissue like um like you showed me before like i sorry like i showed you before in one of my other videos so that's really handy and helpful because they're packed with nutrients because a lot of people they get the dead leaves at the end of the year and um you can feed them live as well as dried but this just literally stops the uh, that aging process, dries them out. So then in the winter time, you can take one of these from your fridge or your freezer 
You can freeze them as well if you don't want to dry them. Blanch them and you've got all packed with nutrients you can feed through the winter as well when they're, obviously they're not growing. So there's another one that you can use guys. Is oak leaves. They're really handy. What else can I show you? Okay guys, here's another leaf we can be using. This is a beech tree. This is a big old, big old chap goes right up there. Absolutely stuffed with leaves. But yet again, these leaves, when they first come out, as you can see, they're lovely and green, beautiful colour. And you can do the same things with these. These are slightly a bit more of a greasy nature to them. And you can eat these as well. When they first, when they first shoot, you can actually eat them as well. And um, they've got a bit of a tangy taste to them. Pull that one off there. Mm. Very nice indeed. Nice little sharp taste to it. Not too bad. But while they're young, you can eat them as well. In fact, I might have another one there. Yeah, that's very nice indeed. But like I said, guys, you can take those off. You can use these, freeze them for winter food. It's great to prep up in the spring ready for the winter because when the winter comes and you haven't got anything you'll look and you'll think aha I remember now I made all those thanks to that mad bloke on Marks Aquatics reminding me to put it in the fridge so we got all those as well straight off the tree absolutely tasty and you won't beat it for vitamins and minerals for you and your shrimps another thing guys is when you're actually collecting and foraging for leaves um, Always make sure you see you've got some beech leaves there that are right down nice and low. Don't go picking them because dogs can get them up there and cock their legs up on them and different things and can get onto them. You want to pick them up from as high as you can. And obviously away from anywhere where there's going to be pesticides put down like golf courses, different places like that. Don't pick anything up because they're forever using fertilizers and stuff of that nature which is going to kill your shrimps in no time at all. So always pick things as high as you can, as fresh as you can. And as I look across here, here's another one you can use as well. The good old bramble. You can get a lovely big bramble leaf like that and do exactly the same with those. These are all easily and readily available all over the place they, they're growing and there's no end of them. Hazel leaves is another one. This is a hazel leaf, leaf or a lime. There's another species which is similar to that. You can use those. The same again, packed with nutrients for your shrimps, and it gives them something different. You know, they're all they're all packed with different vitamins and minerals, and um, and it's nice to give them a little change. Things like the ivy and all that. Obviously, you can't use those ash trees there, little baby ash tree. I wouldn't want to use that. I'm not sure if you can or not. If you think you've used it before, drop us a little comment in the section below, as you know. But new things like, you get a lovely new shoot of that bramble coming up there. Look at that stunning colour. Just move that one out of the way. But look at that, absolutely beautiful. Now you can take that head off of there, just pinch that off. You can boil that up, put that into your uh, into your shrimp tank, and they will absolutely go nuts for that stuff. They really will. What else can we use? Aha, here's another one. The old dandelion. Beautiful big flower like that. Little insects creeping around all over it. But these nice big these nice big leaves there's another one there look same again like spinach like lettuce all those family very very nice to use same again make sure you go out in the middle of a field anywhere where it's not a farmer or anywhere where he's putting pesticides know where you're picking from that's very very important or like i say you can wipe your shrimps out in no time at all so you can use dandelions as well if you're not sure when the dandelions get that they get that on the top if you remember the old uh, the old tinker bells off they go with their little seeds. <clears throat> lots and lots of brambles. It won't be long before they're flowering. Some lovely blossoms up on this tree here. Lots and lots of brambles. Oh, there's a little one. Look at that. That is the very rare and elusive golf ball. We don't see often, we don't see these around here often. Look at that, a Wilson Staff number one. I'll take that home, Spuddy will like to chew on that one. You can go in my pocket. 
Now, during this time of the year, guys, we get all the bluebells here up in the woods, which is absolutely stunning. They're, they're all in flower at the moment and looking beautiful. Look at that. There's some lovely bits of wood around here as well. This is quite a heavily trodden area, but if I had a big pleco tank, look at that for a lovely big stump. But the trouble is, it's in a high traffic area here, so you could clean it out. Look at that. Loads of little hiding places under there if that was turned upside down for them to lay their eggs and breed away happily. You can soak them for some time. I could always take that one home actually and put it in my little mini pond outside and let it soak in there for a few months and that would leach anything out that's in there and I could use that so I might grab that on the way back but make sure if you do anything like that you do leach it all first or or get it in a big pot and boil it and make sure you kill everything on it or, you know on, that's living in amongst it first beautiful dappled light coming through the trees as we go around look at that big big carpet of bluebells going right the way through there and it annoys me because you get these lovely paths and these lovely walkways and then you get these kids coming around here on these quads and things and they go all through them and they tear them all up and make a right mess they're little monkeys they are I know we're all young once but there must be other places they can go rather than churning up all this beautiful these little walkways A little bigger, the old ivy's creeping up that old tree there, big oak tree. And there's still lots of leaf litter from last year all over the ground here. Slowly rots down over time. Look at that, no end of it. Got all sorts in there, look. And you can still use that guys for your shrimp, don't forget. It's still usable, not off a path like this. But if you can find somewhere where it, you've got a decent source of it and it's blown up and banked up somewhere. It's a good little place to find stuff. Look at that, there's a big old sinkhole there. Now, because we're in the Welsh Valleys here, you've got a lot of mines. There's miles and miles of mines under me now. And you get these sinkholes. And they're filled with water, there's lots of them up on this little bank in here. So you've got to be a bit careful not to go walking around, you never know when one's going to cave in. There you go guys, you can see the majority of the leaf litter on the ground here goes all the way up. It's predominantly beech. It really has a waxy texture to the leaf and it really does take a long time to break down. Now that's last year's leaf. And as you can feel it, it's very, very smooth. It does break up, but it's very smooth. And the oak leaves I tend to have withered away. And this is mostly just beech, so it just shows you how long that it lasts for. And they do last quite a long time in the tank, and they take quite a long time to sink as well. Like oak leaves, if you boil them and then add them to your tank, they'll sink fairly quickly. But the beech leaves tend to uh, stay floating for quite some time. I can hear a squirrel racing around above me somewhere, throwing things down at me. Loads more bluebells, look at that, they're just starting to go over now. We've missed the best of them really, but... Absolutely magic. There's a big old beech tree. Well, this old guy's come to an end Look at that, absolutely rotting away, full of uh, full of holes, full of woodpecker holes, nut hatches where they've been hiding seeds and different things in over the winter. And it looks like there's leaves coming off it, but it's a tree behind it that you can see. Riddled with little holes, little creeps, complete ecosystem in this tree, it really is. It's going to come down one day, I hope I'm not around it when it does. Now that's some of the moss I was talking about putting in, in your tanks this stuff it's like a sphagnum moss not a hundred percent sure of the uh, of the name of it I'll have to look it up but I found this stuff 
grows quite well if you just have it on the rockwork around the top if you're doing a paludarium or anything it works quite well it'll sit in the water but as long as you keep the top out it'll grow and it'll move around over the rocks and looks quite good load of fungus there growing around the base of this tree this whole dead tree now is becoming life and a food and nutrient source for all the other creatures now in the in the woodland and they're going to start taking it back to nature and reversing it back into into ground and for new little trees to start growing in amongst it all right guys i've come across an old dead uh, limb off of an oak tree here which has been sat for quite some time and we've got a nice thickish bark on these and these are really good for making little pleco hides as well so what i'm going to try and do is set you up a moment like that get out the old knife this is a knife i had made for me by a company called woodland edge there you go i'm not sure if they're still making knives but this was number 27 absolutely razor razor sharp and it's a beautiful knife all handcrafted now what you want to do is if you can you can either get a saw and saw a piece off but this is a nice little straight piece through here to here so what i'm going to do is just get the knife Grab it like that. Sorry if you're out of shot a minute, and just ring your knife around it in a ring like that, pushing that all the way through, and then do the same here. I'm just going to lift it up a minute. Like that. So now we've got a ring cut all the way around there and all the way around there and then if you can stick the point in and just drag that along there like that and turn him over just break that piece off a minute Shift these bits off. And then get your knife back in there on the other ring. Slide that along and then get your knife in there. Being very careful not to cut yourself and just wiggle that along. Let me try and set you up a little bit higher. And wiggle that little knife along under there like that. go and you can pull them off the other one as well that will pop off quite easy and there you go we've got two lovely little placo hides there now and you end up just taking it away. You might you might find a thicker one. I'll just put this knife away a minute. I've got the mozzies chasing me around, trying to have a bite out of me. But I'll take you now. There you go. Now you can put them in, we can boil those up, and that's gonna make two great little pleck hides for our little baby plecos that we got coming on. It's going to be fantastic it's going to work really well so i'll show you how to do that and as these dry there's a lot of moisture in them at the moment because of the rain and the damp conditions around here but they'll soon dry out leave them in the sun after you've done the uh, boiling and they'll go very very hard 
heap more bluebells. Look at that. These have come out a little bit later, so we've got a nice a nice show of colour on them. Now there's a massive limb there, look, that's fallen off of the off of this old oak tree here, which is very, very old. See all the lichen all over it. Shows it's a healthy ecosystem around here with all that lichen. The lichen only grows where you've got a good source of air and not a lot of pollutants. But yes, if you're going to use bark, guys, don't go using bark off of fir trees, pine trees, anything of that nature, because it does look nice, but it's full of resins, and you're going to mess up your tank and your uh, your parameters and everything, because it will really set resin into uh, into your system water. It? Right, guys, sycamore leaves are okay to use as well. I've used these for my shrimps before. Some lovely new growth here. And it's a bit of a plague species in Britain. It does grow everywhere, it's prolifically breeding. If you live in the, in the UK, you'll know you. By the time the springtime comes, if you live around these, your gutters are full of them growing up everywhere. They're growing out from your deck in, between your slabs, everywhere around your house. You'll have little seedlings popping up everywhere. But this is an old one there that's stuck up this old runner going up there. It's only about 12 feet tall, but it's set some nice bark on it. Now the bark you can use as well. The bark's completely safe to go in. Now what I've done is I've done exactly the same there. I've just run my knife around here like that and around there like that and scored it up there like that. Now with this stuff you can get your nail in and you can just run your nail underneath. It's a very, very pliable bark. Look at that. And you can run your finger, it's quite slimy inside, then get your thumb and just start very slowly teasing it away. You'll hear it coming away. And it come off like a big strip of paper, which you can make hides out of as well. We can go all the way around. Just keep going like that. Just come around here now and I'll, I'll start that side off. Just run that down there. Look at that, the old bush tucker man. Bear grills eat your heart out. He knows nothing. He knows nothing compared to me. <laughs> anyway, this is what they do. It's the same, there you go, pop. And off it comes. Now, you've got a lovely round piece of, of bark now, which you can make just into a tube. You could do a bit of super glue on it and make it and keep it round like that and glue it together. Dry that out and you've got a lovely little pleco hide there they can go in and shelter in. Look at that. Everything from nature. I'll take that home as well and we'll do something with that. And I'll just show you the process on how I... Uh, how I do it. Still very pliable at the moment, but you can make it as big or as small as you like just by feeding it in on itself like that. So if you've got a smaller pleco you can do that. If you've got a massive one you can open him right up to full size again like that. Ingenious nature's way. See nature always finds a way of producing stuff. In the wild this would have rotted out you end up with bark getting left like that on the bottom of the uh, rivers and streams and they'll go in there use these as natural little um, little breeding pots and hiding caves. So there's something else that you've, uh, if you don't know, you've, uh, you've learnt today. And if you, haven't, if you don't want to do that, if there's another piece there that someone's kindly cut off a while ago. There's a lot of people cut down the, uh, the sycamores because they're a pain. They're a pain. But then you can use that, you can cut a piece off and then just run your knife straight across it like that and then peel it off. But that's what you get. And once you cut it off, it stays round. And as it dries, it will, it will dry and stay round. So we're going to use that in one of our, in one of our plec projects, I think. Okay, guys, we're back home now. I'm just outside on my little bench and I just thought I'd 
we'll go through what we've been collecting today. Obviously we've got the nettles at the back there. We've got the tips, very tips of the brambles that are growing at the moment. These are great for freezing down. Right packed with nutrients on the end of there. We've got the uh, hazel leaf there as well. We've got the br lovely beech leaves. Which are absolutely packed with nutrients as well. We've got the dandelion dandelion leaves there. Okay, and we've got the oak leaves here. And one leaf I did find when I was walking back, and I didn't show you, was this big fella here. Now this is a this called a dock leaf. And uh, I'm not sure if you guys know, but they grow very, very close. I'll just get a better view for you. There you go, that's a bit better. Now you normally find dock leaves growing very, very near to where stinging nettles grow. The reason is, the old timers, if you get stung by a stinging nettle, grab some of this, tear it up, screw it up, release some of the juices and rub that on the stinging nettle area where it stung you and it takes the sting away. And I've done that for years, ever since I was a kid. My grandparents taught me that. We've got the sycamore bark tube there and the two oak half tubes there as well. Now these are going to dry out very quick and as they're oak they're full of tannins as well which will release into your water which is good for your pH, lowering the pH as well if you want to do that. This stuff will go a lot harder, obviously this was living so it's going to take some time to dry out so what I'll do is I'll leave that out in the sun now to completely bake dry first and then we'll use that later on for whatever we want to do it but before you straighten it all again you've got to put it into the boiling water like that otherwise if you try and open it up and it's dry it's just going to crack so you've got to put it back into the boiling water re suck that water back into it hydrate it again so then you can steam it open shape it to what you want to do and then do that process all over again then you can put it in your tank afterwards when it's dry so that's another good way another all the other leaves you can use guys this time of year as well is all the apple all the fruit trees um i've got up here my grapevine which is growing just along the top of my window there and that I use, but I know obviously I know where the source is, and I know there's no. You've got to watch it with grapes. Don't use any grape vines that you've you've got from anywhere that um, commercially grow or anywhere like that. Or if you go for one of these pick your own places, don't think about getting anything from them sort of areas because they heavily use pesticides and stuff to get the maximum crops they can get. So um, make sure it all comes from a real good fruit, uh, you know, a free pesticide source when you get it. Someone's garden that you know friend of a friend that kind of thing or if you're going right out to the beaten path back into the woods you know there's nothing's going to be used out there so you're safe to use them and uh, and give the old shrimps a bit of nutrition as well and I say my my plex will eat these as well the dried oak leaves they'll eat those once they've dried I get them in the autumn get the fresh dried ones and as they break down they ingest that which is good for their stomachs and good for their digestion and make sure you get a load of stinging nettles before the winter time because now's the time to pick them when they're all rammed full of nutrients. It's the best time to get them, guys. It really is. Yep, yeah, all the fruit trees, anything like that you can use leaf-wise. So now you can go and pick yourself a load and store it up for the winter. Anyway, guys, I hope you like that, like that little run around the woods. I surely did. I love going up in the woods and finding stuff and getting something from nature to look after nature. Anyway guys, you're all stars, I love you loads, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.